Hello, welcome to part two of our discussion on measurement from chapter five of Maxfield and Babby. I'm going to be briefly showing you a real world example of trying to measure some theoretical constructs in an actual environment. So several years ago, I was involved in a study in Winter Park, Florida, and we were trying to understand what factors led to property crimes such as residential burglary, theft from vehicle, and motor vehicle theft itself. And so I was actually going out to locations where these crimes occurred in Winter Park and completing an environmental survey. And that survey had measures of various theoretical constructs. And so we were seeing how theory actually played out in real life. And so what you're seeing now is a Google Street View image of a random location in Winter Park. So Google Street View uh, provides sort of a virtual tour of the environment. So you can walk around this neighborhood and, and get a sense of uh, where the houses are and where the road is and just some of the um, physical characteristics and attributes of this neighborhood, almost as if you were actually there. So for this study, I was actually walking around in these neighborhoods. I was physically there. Uh, we also had an undergrad that was doing a virtual survey as well. So she was using uh, Google Street View, just as I am, to conduct an assessment of these locations. And so again, these are just random locations in Winter Park. In the actual study, we were looking at locations where burglaries had occurred. And we were trying to see if we could measure uh, theoretical constructs in the environment and see if these theoretical constructs correlated with the burglary activity that we had uh, recorded um, and that we had information on from the Winter Park Police Department. So again, you can just kind of put yourself in my shoes walking around this neighborhood and then filling out the environmental survey. So let me bring up the environmental survey for you. So here is a page from the environmental survey. Uh, the first theory that we looked at was broken windows theory. So broken windows theory suggests that as the physical environment deteriorates, um, so as we tend to see uh, lots with overgrown weeds, deteriorated buildings, and just other signs of environmental deterioration, that people begin to realize that no one cares about this area, no one is um, looking after this area. And so it's an okay place to come and commit crime because no one cares, right? Um, the area that has a deteriorated lawn, for instance, um, obviously no one's looking at that compared to an area that has a very well manicured lawn. And so one thing that we tried to do was develop some measures of some of these broken windows concepts and see if they applied in Winter Park, specifically in locations where there were burglaries. So one of the... Uh, theoretical attributes that we're interested in was sidewalk and road condition. So as I'm walking around in Winter Park, I had to judge uh, how I felt the condition and maintenance of the sidewalk and road were. So I had to uh, assess and indicate on the survey what I thought the condition of the road was. So one would be good, as you can see, very few heaves, bumps, cracks, holes, weeds, etc. Two would be fair three would be poor, and then four would be under repair. And I had to assess this for the sidewalk and the road. So as I was walking around in Winter Park, uh, I had to take a look at the road and sidewalk and assess it and then fill it out on my survey. So this road, you know, looking at it, you can see it looks like it has a fair amount of cracks and bumps. Uh, again, this is easier to detect in person. The sidewalk looks also uh, very similar in that there's a number of uh, you know, cracks and, and bumps. It looks like the sidewalk actually is in better shape than the road. But this is something that I would assess in my survey and then would rate uh, how I felt the uh, condition of the road or sidewalk were, and I would rate that on my survey. And the idea here is that if broken windows theory holds up, 
we should see that areas where there are lots of burglaries tend to have uh, very poor sidewalks and roads. And so the idea here in terms of a policy implication would be that if we clean up some of these signs of disorder, that we might see a reduction in burglary. Okay, whether you believe that or not, uh, you know, that's up to you, that's subjective, and that is a measure from theory. But that's one way that we measured a theoretical construct from broken windows theory in Winter Park. Uh, some other constructs that we can look at from broken windows theory. Let's see. So that wasn't the only attribute from broken windows theory that we looked at. Broken windows theory also suggests that as signs of physical disorder uh, go up, that it's going to lead to more crime. So I had some measures here of physical disorder. So I had to rate the amount of garbage or litter that I saw on the street. And as you can see, these are my indicators here. None are little, some moderate lots or not applicable deteriorated buildings or houses. So again, rating whether or not uh, I see a, a lot of deteriorated buildings or houses on the street, deteriorated lawns, overall subjective assessment of amount of physical disorder in the segment. So uh, again, I had to assess the amount of disorder. Now, this is one of the problems that we see with measurement. Sometimes when we're measuring these concepts, it's subjective. So I may look at a street and say, yeah, this has some physical disorder, but someone else looking at it and filling out the survey may say, oh, that has a moderate amount of disorder or that has none or little. So that is one of the problems that we have with measuring some of these uh, fuzzy concepts. And again, as I talked about, uh, it's very difficult to measure some of these concepts in criminal justice and criminological research because we don't often have agreement about what constitutes disorder, what constitutes some versus moderate versus lots. So a few other examples I want to share with you. Um, so again, these are concepts from broken windows theory. Uh, let's see. So... Again, broken windows theory suggests that signs of physical disorder predict crime. So again, as I'm walking around on the street in Winter Park, I had to note the presence of cigars, cigarettes in the street, presence of empty beer bottles in the street, condoms on the sidewalk, needles or syringes on the sidewalk, and then finally an overall subjective assessment of the amount of physical disorder. So again, as we see increases in these um, theoretical constructs, we should see more crime. Okay, so again, as I'm walking around in Winter Park, I'm going to be looking for uh, cigarettes, syringes, condoms, and I actually don't remember encountering this too much uh, when I was actually doing the, uh, the street view assessments in, in Winter Park. Uh, Winter Park was actually, most of the locations I went to were actually pretty clean. Um, but again, this is just an example of measurement from theory. Uh, one final element that we brought in from Broken Windows Theory was this idea of um, social disorder. So not only physical disorder, but social disorder. So the more that we see people drinking alcohol in public, the more that we see adults maybe fighting or acting in a, a hostile manner, the more we see drug dealing, these tend to be correlates of crime. So as I was going through Winter Park, I was noting whether or not these things were present. So whether I saw adults loitering or congregating at these locations, drinking alcohol in public, uh, peer group with gang indicators present, public intoxication. So again, just seeing if these things were, in this case, absent or present at the locations I visited in Winter Park where uh, burglaries had occurred. Uh, so another thing that we looked at was uh, situational crime prevention and target hardening. So this is the idea that if you implement target hardening in locations that you're supposed to see uh, less burglary so or less crime in general. So let's take a look at some of these measures. So again, as I'm walking through Winter Park... Um, I'm going to be noting uh, some of these measures from situational crime prevention. Okay, so target hardening. 
All right, so these are my target hardening measures. So as I'm walking around, I'm looking for gates, fences, whether gates are open, doors are open, security bars or gates on windows, uh, visible security and alarm company signage, property ID signage, neighborhood watch signage, anti-robbery screens, CCTV cameras. So according to theory, as we see the presence of these things, the presence of fences, the presence of security cameras, uh, security bars, we should see reductions in crime because these things are deterrents for crime. So as I'm walking around the street environment in Winter Park, I'm actually looking for some of these attributes and noting the presence of these attributes uh, in the houses and the locations that I look at. Okay, so again, this is Street View. Um, and we did have a student coding in Street View, and we also, I was coding at the actual locations, but looking for the presence of, of some of these target hardening um, variables and attributes. So finally, one other theory that we used to guide us was routine activity theory and rational choice. And so this is the idea that crime occurs when you have a convergence in time and space of a motivated offender, a suitable target, and an absence of capable guardianship. And so if we consider a burglary scenario, a suitable target would be a house that uh, looks like it's a uh, prime for the picking, as it were, a uh, motivated offender would be a burglar, and capable guardianship would be someone that could intervene and stop the burglar. And so we had some various measures, again, from theory of guardianship. So as you can see on the environmental survey, number of properties in segment with visible outdoor seating. So the idea being that as we see properties that have outdoor seating, uh, it's a lot less likely that there's going to be burglaries in those locations. Number of properties in segment with visible flower or vegetable gardens. So again, the idea that if people are taking care of their gardens, it's a lot more likely someone's going to be outside, might be able to intervene in a burglary scenario. Well-maintained lawn, poorly maintained lawn, segment with decorations present, segment with property signs and nameplates present. So again, these are constructs from theory that represent guardianship. And if we see some of these attributes like a well-maintained lawn, decorations, property signs and nameplates, the idea is that, hey, people are looking out for this area, there's capable guardianship, there's more likely to be people outside, and so therefore we should see reductions in property crime. So those weren't all the measures that we looked at, but that was just a sample of some. Uh, again, the whole point of this was to just show you some of the difficulties of trying to measure theory and theoretical constructs in real life scenarios. But this is basically all measurement is. We have these theoretical constructs and theory to guide us, and then we try and come up with observable ways that we can measure those things in the real world, and we fill them out on a survey like this. So if you have any questions uh, about any of this, uh, please feel free to shoot me an email and I would be happy to address them.